Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Caitlin, and today we are continuing the 100 Dragon Challenge. I know I've missed a couple Wednesday videos here in a row, but I can't wait for next week's video, so just bear with me while we do some more dragons this week. But today we are doing the suggestion of a pangolin dragon. I love these creatures. They're super cute. I've used them in like commission monster mashes and just in other creatures that I've designed. They're really adorable, amazing creatures. Um, sadly, like I think a lot of them are endangered, if not all of them, because their scales are seen as something like to traffic and such. So that's kind of sad. And I hope that we can keep them going. I know I just went on an environmental tangent, but yeah, I'm excited to jump in. I want to show off my new bracelets. So I did these friendship bracelets, a dragon daddy and a cackles or a chuckles. Did I say cackles? Chuckles? You know, whatever the laughing word. Um, we did those when I was in Toronto and I hung out with Casey and Dark at Toronto Fan Expo, which was super dope. I don't remember if I really talked about it all in the last 100 Dragon video, but it was awesome seeing you guys and doing like a little mini meetup and like hanging out and drawing and oh, it was so cool. So thanks guys, it was, it was really fun. But back to the dragon. So I had a couple ideas on how to execute a pangolin. So I have seen pangolin dragons in the past. I've seen a couple of people post them, like a couple artists that I follow have drawn inspiration from pangolins, but I tried really hard not to keep their designs in mind. I'm like, I want to do something a little bit different. And uh, I think the ones I've seen are kind of more of the slim dragons with the scaling on them. But I was like, I kind of really like the bulkiness to the original pangolin. Like they have, uh, I guess, a broader set to them. Their feet are similar to anteater feet and they kind of curl at the knuckle. And I just wanted to still highlight kind of the the bulkiness of it. Even though it's a smaller animal, it has like broader arms and like big stubby legs. And I just wanted to highlight that, but put it on a bigger scale. So it was like a big dragon sized creature. And yeah, I just, that's, that's kind of the idea I went with. But in the little corner, I did do like the thinner idea just to try it out. And I just, I really like the bigger, bulkier dragon. Like I haven't, God, actually, when was the last time I did a, did a bigger, bulkier dragon? I might have just done one like three episodes ago, but I'm already spacing on it because I think the last few have been more thin and agile uh, dragons. So maybe I'm just forgetting and my memory is terrible like it always is. But yeah, so with these different sketches, I knew that I wanted to make the plating on the pangolin like obviously more dragon-like. So I was thinking about what if the back row, like going along the spine had more like spikes to them, kind of like a dragon spines down its back. And then I also just tried to figure out the face shape. Like I, uh, the pangolin face is super cute and I really like how it curves and its look, but I also kind of wanted to experiment with like, well, what if I did a more traditional dragon face? But I was like, I'm gonna go with like the more pangolin looking face. So with that, after I figured out all of the rough sketching, it was time to jump in and do the final sketch. So for me, I really wanted to show off the scales. Like I knew this one was going to take quite a while. Like after I started just thinking about, oh my gosh, I got to draw all this plating. And at first I was like, man, I kind of want to check it out and do a, a headshot because guys, my, my day job has been so busy and like kind of exhausting. So uh, it's been hard to motivate myself to do full bodies. But this one, I was like, no, I got to do it justice. If I'm going to do a pangolin, I got to show off all of those beautiful scales. So I decided to just do a really cute full body. And now that I'm looking at it, I would say this is kind of like a pangolin bear in a way. Like it, it has a similar pose to this big sleepy bear. And I really love this pose overall. And God, guys, it was fun doing the little platelets. Uh, I've said it before in the past, but I really get into those monotonous duplicating patterns. They're just so nice and I guess rejuvenating and therapeutic to just do the same shape over and over and over, even if they're different sizes. So the sketch was super fun, just doing that over and over. And then the line art was probably just as fun, but oh my God, it took a very long time. Like the sketch, you can kind of just go really quick and not try to perfect the shape of the scales. But wow, this one took a long time. I think total, God, how long did this drawing take? You'll see even more later when I start doing the coloring, but like the line art and the sketches took the least amount of time. 
the Copics for sure took the most amount of time, but either way, the line art was still really intensive to get every one of those scales. I think the overall piece, man, I have a feeling it was like maybe six to six to eight hours total for this drawing. Yeah, I think so. It just, it took a very long time, but it was really nice. I just put on a podcast. I've been listening to not another D&D podcast. So I had that going in the background and I just like chunked through like five episodes of it. It was great. And I just was like tuning out and making these little monotonous little scales over and over and over. And it was just so fun. And speaking of inking, guys, we're coming up on Inktober pretty soon. Like, I am really excited. They released the list recently, and I already got a couple ideas on what I want to do this year. I'm trying to decide what my final overall theming is going to be. But if you guys have some ideas on what I should do as an overarching theme, because I like incorporating all my Inktober stuff together, leave me a comment down below, because last year we did the uh, big tavern scene, and then the year before I did uh, Monster Girls, but I would love a new overarching theme. I have kind of some ideas, but I don't want to, I don't want to tell you guys that. I just want to see what your guys' ideas are first, and I don't want to influence you and your creativity. So leave me a comment down below if you can think of, like, an overarching theme I could do for my Inktobers. I'd love to hear it. So now with the line art completed, it was time to jump in and do the Copic colors. So there are quite a few different pangolin colorings. There's like more of a lightish brown, some darker browns, like lots of different ranges of colors and even some white ones. But I wanted to do the black belly pangolin. I love the coloring on this one. It also, <laughs> I feel like I purposely murdered myself with this one as well because Basically, every single scale has three colors. It has a yellow, a mid-brown, and then a darkish, blackish brown, depending on the lighting on this creature. And oh my gosh, this is where all of my time went. Like, first of all, my yellow marker is officially dead. I'm gonna be ordering refills probably like this week um, because all of these yellows just dried it out and just doing three different colors on every single scale throughout the entire thing was exhausting, but super worth it. I think this is probably my favorite coloring of a dragon. Uh, overall, like every week I feel my dragons are getting better, so I'm finding ones that I'm liking more and I have a new favorite all the time. So, God, I don't know. This one I really like. The gargoyle dragon is still like probably a top one for me in terms of like the, the, I guess, technique and the look of it overall. But I think this one has taken the new spot for a favorite dragon overall. I'm just super proud of the coloring and the design. And this dragon is so cute. Like she is like this adorable little bear ball of adorableness. <laughs> I know like, I, God, I just, I see so many bits of inspiration in this one. Uh, right before I drew this, my husband and I visited the zoo again. We try to go every weekend or every few weekends. Recently, it's been way too hot in Arizona. So we went for like maybe an hour-ish in the, uh, like it was already 90 degrees at 30% humidity at like eight in the morning. It was awful. So we didn't get to a lot in the zoo, but I did get to see like some of my favorites, like the anteater, the maned wolf. I really love um, the hyenas and uh, the African dogs. There was lots of different ones there. Uh, and then one of my favorites also there is the bear. We have a really adorable black bear from, uh, ooh, I think it's the, the South Africa, no, it's not South, South America. I think it's from like somewhere in Colombia. Um, but I love that bear. It's so cute. Uh, so I just, I think I really honed in on this big snuggly, bear pangolin dragon my uh a friend of mine had a really good analogy for it where she's kind of hard and tough on the outside but she's a soft cuddly thing on the inside and uh i just i'm gonna embrace it because she's super cute and adorable and i just love how she turned out oh and then i added an extra little thing i thought it'd be really cool if there was a way to show like if she was a fire breather how we could show that through her scales so along 
her neck, I had it kind of light up with this red in between the scales. I think it'd be so cool, like right before she like shoots out all this fire, like all the scales around her neck just light up with this like reddish hue. And then she just like belches out all this fire. That'd be super sick and really dope. And it actually adds a really cool like uh, effect to the scales. Like it helps you identify where the neck is. And I just really like that extra little bit of coloring on this girl. She just, uh, I love her, looks so great. So as you guys can see, my general technique for Copic coloring is you start with the lighter colors and then you put in the mid-tone and then the dark colors. I make sure to kind of color further than I want the, like for example, the light yellow, I color it further than it's going to actually rest. So then the mid-tone can go over it a little bit and help it blend. This one I didn't do like my usual blending technique where you put the lightest color um, and then the mid-tone and then you color over it again with the light color because I was just running out of yellows like this one didn't have my full Blending shading look that I usually do where I repeat with the lightest color just because god it, it just died It was running out of ink like right around here was when it got really bad like when I was working down the tail I actually had to take a couple breaks in between just because I feel so bad for my marker. I I I know I try not to abuse my supplies, so don't get after me, but I had to push pretty hard on the pen to get any ink out. There was like just no more yellow left. So the tail probably took the longest just because I had to keep starting and stopping because my hand cramped up a lot. <laughs> I know it's such a weird problem to have and I'm like, oh, woe is me for hand cramping while drawing. Like, ugh, just, I, I didn't want to murder myself. So I tried to stop here and there to give my hand a rest just because, man, the, oh God, the yellow just wanted to die and it was sad. <laughs> For sure, I'm gonna have to order refills. I think I'm gonna go through and check my full list of Copics and see if any of them are running low on ink because I know some of them are. And with that, we are getting pretty close to finishing this beautiful girl up. I really love her overall design. She's just so adorable, like, this for sure is going in Creature Compendium number two. It's gotta happen. Like this would be a great monster to have maybe like with companion stats. How great would it be to be a ranger and have this thing as your companion? I could see it being the size of a bear to start. And then maybe as you like level up, it grows into like more of a full size dragon. Oh, that'd be so cool. I want it just for my character. Like I would love to have a big pangolin companion, man between it being super intimidating because it's a giant spiky looking dragon um, and then just the idea of its personality, I could see her being so sassy and like having so much attitude towards me. Yeah, I, I, I mean, it's gonna happen. I'm gonna have to make, like I already was gonna make a creature compendium number two, but she is going to be in there and for sure we're gonna put some companion stats because this is just too good of a companion to pass up. So with that, I'm excited to see your guys' pangolin dragons. If you would like to participate in this week's 100 Dragon Challenge, make sure to post your dragon on Twitter or Instagram using the hashtag KM100Dragons. But let's go ahead and look at last week's entries. So lots of really cute 
peacock dragons, guys. Like, it was cool seeing the different color diversities you had from the different types of peacocks that are out there. And then it was really cool to see how you guys treated the bird overall. Lots of different, like, wing variety and how they attach to the dragon and then just, like, where you would put the feathers. Really creative and diverse. Great job, you guys. Amira the Drake, I really love your dragon. It's like, God, I don't know the technical term, but the, the feathers that look more like fur, I really love. And then putting the raptor claw was a great touch. I just really love the coloring on this and just like the overall design, super sleek. And it looks like it could exist. Like it looks like it could have been a dinosaur back in the day. And I'm gonna butcher your name. I'm so sorry. Me Tracky Octavian, me, me Track. Octavian, I'm so, I'm so sorry. I just butchered it. But anyway, I really think yours is super cute. I love the feathers and how yours also kind of had a dinosaur feel today. Man, I picked two that are very similar, like dinosaur feel, but really great. And I love all the little detailing you put on it. So again, if you guys would like to submit one, make sure to post it on Instagram or Twitter using the hashtag KM100Dragons. If you guys have suggestions for dragons, go ahead and put them down in the comments below, or I have a couple of links to a Discord and a Twitter post that you can reply to as well. So thanks again guys so much for stopping by and checking out this video. And if you aren't already, I would love if you hit that subscribe button and join our little fun monster and dragon filled community. So thanks again guys so much for stopping by and I cannot wait to reveal the big project I've been working on. Stay tuned for next week Wednesday's video. It's gonna be awesome. Like this has been like a month in the making, probably even more, mo like closer to two months. Yeah, basically since I had to get my appendix taken out. So quite a while, but anyway, thanks again guys and I will see you next time. Bye everybody.